I studied physics and in my PhD I was studying microwaves and how microwaves move around and I thought I understood that quite well. And in about 1986, some friends rang me up late at night and said they'd heard that there's some whales that had stranded down at Augusta. And did I want to come along? And I said, yes, all right. And we drove all night, we got there first thing in the morning, put on our wetsuits, went into the water and tried to help with these stranded whales. It was a very distressing situation, but it was a very uplifting situation. Uh, and as a physicist, I asked myself, what's going on? What's the relationship here? Why are they stranding? And I wondered whether I could find an answer using what I knew and thinking about the problem. When I was faced with this situation, uh, I suppose I behaved very similar to what most scientists would do in this situation. And you try and simplify the problem down to the essential components. So although I was in Augusta and there was the Blackwood River and there was various things around, these may not be present at every stranding. So what are the essentials of this? And so you essentially re reduce the problem down to the minimum number of things that still give you that problem. And then you try and understand that. And then perhaps later, if you want to really understand it, you add the other specifics in for the situation. For me, it was the, the common element to all the strandings when I looked into it was that there was always a gently sloping sandy beach. So you find there's the ocean surface and there's a ge gently sloping sandy beach. You don't find strandings where there's lots of rocks and a, a steeply sloping beach. So that's one component that's present for all strandings. So there has to be something to do with, if you like, the geometry of the situation, the underwater geometry. And the fact that the only species that strand in mass, that large numbers, you occasionally get a whale, a large whale, like a, a humpback whale might get washed up on the beach. But that's more likely a case where the whale has become sick or ill and has just ended up on the beach. When you find a whole bunch of healthy whales stranding, there's usually some other common cause. And, and that was really what I was looking at. Okay, so I took this situation uh, from the physics point of view and I knew that whales and dolphins that strand are using sound. You've got a, an ocean surface, you have a gently sloping sandy beach, and you've got sound inside that environment. So there's going to be reflections, there's going to be echoes, it bounces off the surface, the ocean surface, it bounces off the floor, and we can look at that from a physics point of view and try and understand what the waves are doing. We also need to think about what's happening to the sound as it passes through the water. You find that it does get it does lose some of that energy. It, it gets, as we, as we say, attenuated by the water itself, various elements in the water. And it also loses some sound as it bounces off the sand or bounces off the surface. So we try and add all those things together, use the, the equations of wave propagation, measurements that other people have made and some measurements that we've made of how much sound is lost in all these processes and trying to come to an understanding of what would happen if we took a typical whale using a typical amount of sound, sending that out, it bounces around and comes back to the whale. At what level would that sound be or that echo be on return? And by doing that calculation, we could perhaps understand whether a whale in that situation would hear a clear echo from the beach, in other words, know that the beach is there and to avoid it, or perhaps not get any echo at all and so continue on into this shallower and shallower situation where it could very easily find itself with its stomach against the sand and nowhere to escape to. So to understand this situation, one of the things I did was to do some experiments. Uh, two types of experiments. There's experiments that we do in the laboratory where we set up a situation that we know entirely and we send sound around. But we also want to come out into the situation at a beach and send some sound around and try and understand that. And we've done some measurements at a metropolitan beach of Perth, uh, Port Beach, where there is a gently sloping beach and we went out in a boat with a source of sound and some underwater microphones and we've been conducting experiments with that. At the moment we've got a lot of data that we've collected from the beach and in the lab and we're analysing it. My PhD student Shane is analysing that and uh, we hope to get some promising results from that. It's not only whales that have this problem, but 
submarines also move, move around and navigate in the ocean and they can find themselves into a in a difficult or dangerous situation because they're using sonar to image their environment. Uh, and so it's well known in the Navy that there are places where submarines can come into trouble. So there's not only benefits for the whales, but benefits for man as well in understanding these things.